Okay, so for 8b, we have a different type of problem now. Number 8 is going to require you to set up an equation. So basically find two equations, plug one into the other, and then apply the vertex formula. So the first one we looked at was that, that product one, where the sum of two numbers, and we find the product. Here's a second type that it could look like on the test. You want to make sure you know how to do both these types because really they both do the same kind of thing. So here's another different example of, of, of B here. It says uh, a rancher with 600 feet of fencing wants to enclose a rectangular horse corral and divide it into two pens as shown. And this drawing uh, has been given to you. So the first part asks us find an equation or find a function A of X that models the area in terms of width X. They're saying that the X variable here we want to call that the width with this one. So uh, for this, what we're going to do is we're going to label our picture that's given here. So for this particular one, we have two pens, but you know it, it could, you could have three pens or four pens. Doesn't matter. We're still going to do it the same way. Any kind of vertical line you see, whether it's two pens, three pens, four pens, doesn't matter. All of them you're going to label with X because X is the width, and we're calling the width is going to be. It's usually considered the shorter side. So let's put X's down on our picture that was given there. Now, the other variable we use, we can use Y, and I'll use Y for the other length here. Now, if you wanted to use uh, W for width and, and L for the length, that's okay as well. Um, but I'm just going to use X's and Y's since it's a variable that we're familiar with working with. So that's the first thing I want to do is label all my sides. So now every single side is labeled with something. Now I have a total of 600 feet of fencing that's actually used to create this one. So all the sides that I see here that have a variable with it, I'm going to add all those together. So I have three X's and I have two Y's. So I have three X's and two Y's. Now if I add all that together, that should give me my 600 feet of fencing that I have. Now the other formula that I have here is area because it's asking me for an area and based on the way I label this, your area is going to be the area of the whole entire thing. So it's going to be length times width, so area is equal to x times y, and that would be the total of both the pens together. So I don't need to break this up and do two individual areas. I can, but not necessary. I'm just going to do that. So uh, area equals x times y. Now, we're going, to, we're going to do this the same way we did the problem before in the previous section. What I want to do here is solve this equation for your x or y and plug it into the bottom equation and that's going to be my my function. I don't want to just put this because it has to be all in terms of x. So I do have to pay attention to what variable they're asking me to solve for. This time I do want to definitely solve for y only and not x. I want to solve for y because that way I'm going to replace the y here and I'll have everything all in terms of x. So for this uh, what I'm going to do here is solve Solve for y, I'll do with this. So if I solve for y, that means I would subtract 3x from both sides, and now I get 2y, or uh, sorry, 3x here. Actually, I was right the first time. So 2y is going to equal 600 minus 3x. I subtract the 3x from both sides, leave the 2y on that side there. But I also want to divide both of these by 2 and get 300 minus 3 halves x. That's my y value. What I'll now do is the y value that's here, I gotta take that y value and put it into this y right here. So that way I can replace it and I'll have everything in terms of x. When I write my answer, I'll use the notation that it asked me to use, a of x. That's gonna equal x times 300 minus 3 halves x. And that's actually okay to leave your answer in that form. Uh, that would be a, a model. Now you can multiply it out as well if you wanted to, uh, and that's what I'm going to eventually do for the second part of this question. But for the first part of it, I'm just going to put this on my line. It's just asking me for a model or an equation, and that's what I'm going to put down. X times this quantity, 300 minus 3 halves x. Now let's do let's do i uh, the double i here uh, for that. So for this one, uh, we're going to keep that same formula. So let me go ahead and write that down. A of x is equal to x times 300 minus 3 halves x. So I'm going to keep that one because we need to use that in order to do the second part. Okay, so the second part for i 
double I here. Uh, it's asking you to find the um, the maximum dimensions or find, find the, the maximum area that can be enclosed. So find the max area enclosed. Okay, so that's what, that's what two is saying for. Now be careful with the wording on this. The wording could also say find the dimensions. And if it says find the dimensions, that means it's only gonna ask for X and Y. But for this problem, it says find the uh, maximum area and close. It means that we gotta find the X and Y and multiply them together. So for this, we're gonna use our formula from here. Now that formula that I did in the first part, I'm gonna now multiply through by X. So I get 300 X minus 3 halves X squared. And what I want to do now, is, since I have my quadratic formula, is I now want to do the vertex formula. So again, anytime you want to find a max or min with that, we have to use the negative b over 2a formula. So as I mentioned earlier, the b, b value is always in front of the non-squared variable. So b is in front of the x. The a here would be the negative 3 halves. So I'm going to do negative 300 divided by two times negative three halves, two times a in the bottom. The twos are gonna cancel out. I get negative 300 over negative three, which is gonna be positive 100. So I get 100 for the x value. Now earlier, we had, in the previous part, we said that y was equal to 300 minus three halves x. So I'm gonna do that next. I wanna figure out what the uh, y value is and I can find the area. Or I can also take 100 and put 100 into both the x's and I can get the area that way. Uh, so I'm gonna do it this way where I'll find the y value. So just in case they have the question to ask you for dimensions, you would do this step anyway to get the x and the y. So that's why I'm gonna go ahead and show you this procedure. We're gonna do 300 minus 3 halves times 100. And we're gonna simplify this one. Okay, so this uh, one, two goes into 100, you get uh, 50. So you have 300 minus three times 50 or 300 minus 150. So you're gonna get, you'll get 150 as a result. So now, if the question asks for what dimensions produce the largest area, you would answer 100 by 150. To find the actual maximum area enclosed though, I'm gonna multiply these two uh, together to get the area. So in this case, my area is equal to 100 times 150, uh, so that would give me 15,000. And now to put square feet, each of these individually are would be in terms of feet here. If I multiply two feet together, I get square feet as a result. So 15,000 square feet would be the maximum area enclosed.